For us modern humans with our easy access to the local supermarket, it's easy to forget that throughout human history, and even today, the amount of humans or the human population has been limited by our ability to get calories or get human consumable food from the land. So what I want to do in this video is give us a little bit of a framework for thinking about how humans have been getting calories from the land and what that, how that's placed an upper limit on the number of humans that can live in any given area or the, the population density of humans. So right over here, you have some gentlemen looking for food. They are hunter-gatherers. I'll say HG for short. And the, the H part, the hunter part, they, they might actually find some animals. I think these guys right over here are trying to trap some rabbits. And the gathering part, they're just literally looking for food. Maybe they find fruit of some sort, or some nuts, or some or some uh, uh, maybe some roots that are that are edible by humans. So literally, they just walk around, either try to kill things or find things that they can consume. So I'll call this I'll call this right over here stage one. And actually, let me write over here. So this is hunter gatherers, and this is what most humans have done through most of human history. And just to give us a little bit of a framework for maybe how much they could get from the land, and I looked at some of the, the our best sense of studying hunter gatherer populations. In in land like this, maybe they can get about 200 calories, 200, 200, and I'll make this whole column right over here. This whole co column right over here is the amount that they could get in terms of calories per square kilometer per calories per square kilometer per day. Now, it's obviously going to be hugely dependent on the number of animals that are there, the type of land that's there. If they're next to a stream where maybe fish are just jumping out of the stream, this number would be much higher. If they were in some type of a desert, this number would be much lower. But this is actually fairly in line with some of the studies of hunter-gatherer cultures. Now, if this is the number of calories that they can get from each square kilometer per day, how many humans can live in a square kilometer per day? Or what is the density of humans? Well, to figure that out, we have to know, on average, how many calories does a human need to survive. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to make the assumption that a human being needs 2,000 2, calories 2,000 calories per day to survive in a non-malnourished state. And obviously, it's hugely dependent on how active this person is or how large they are. And one other note, this whole video, I'm going to be using calories with a capital C. And the calories are with the capital C are the calories that people are used to referring to when you go to the gym and you run on the treadmill and it says how many calories you've burned. Or you look at the back of your candy bar and it says 200 calories. These are the calories I'm talking about. They are a slightly different notion than the calories that you encounter in chemistry class. Those calories are ca calorie with a lowercase c. And just so that you can be optimally confused, it turns out that one calorie, one calorie with an uppercase c is equal to 1,000, 1,000 calories with a lowercase c. 1,000 calories. And the lowercase c calories is the amount of energy needed to heat one gram of water one degrees Celsius. And so this is what you see in your chemistry class, but this is not what we're going to be talking about in this video. We're talking about the capital C, the calories you talk that, that dietitians are always talking about. So with this assumption that the average human needs 2,000 calories a day to not get malnourished, and obviously men would need more, women would need less, children would need, eat, would, children would need even less, but with this assumption, what is the density of humans that could be supported by this culture right over here? Well, 200 calories is one-tenth of the average daily human requirement, if you believe this assumption. So the population density, so the density in, let me write it, humans, humans per square kilometer, you can only support one-tenth of a human with this, with this calorie output. So you can only support one-tenth of a human per square kilometer. So one human would actually need 10 square kilometers of hunter gathering, uh, 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 to hunt from and gather from in order to support just themselves. They would need maybe 30 or 40 square kilometers to support an entire family so, so that they could wander around and kill the animals and find whatever they need to find on that land. Now let's go to kind of, you can view it as maybe the next stage, although it's not always the case that herding is going to be more productive than hunter gatherers, especially in the case where the fish or jumping out of the water. But let's go to this scenario right over here. So this is, we can call this a pastoral lifestyle. So this is two, I'll call it pastoral. 
And over here is the realization that, look, you have all of this, all of this vegetation that maybe humans can't consume, but there are other animals that can consume this vegetation, and they can turn those calories into calories that can consumed, that can be consumed by a human, and namely them, the, the calories are themselves. So this gentleman right over here, after he gets these, these, these sheep to be nice and fat, he can either eat the sheep. Or he can drink their milk. So what you, one way to think about it is these, these, this, these, this cattle or these sheep right over here. By herding them and letting them eat the grass, he's turning non-human consum non-human consumable calories into human consumable calories. And so for the sake of our thought experiment, let's say we get a 10 times increase in the human consumable calories per square kilometer. So now instead of 200, we're up to 2,000. And so instead of one human per square kilometer, we have enough calories per square kilometer per day to support one human. So instead of sorry, instead of 0.1, we can now support one human. So in that 10 square kilometers, we can now support 10 people. In 100 square kilometers, we could now support 100 people. Now the next stage, and I'm skipping a bunch of stages, so because you have things like subsistence agriculture and and various forms, and they're not going to be equally productive, and it depends what the land is like, and it depends what the tools are at at your disposal. But the next stage that I'll just kind of jump to, we can call traditional agriculture. So this right over here, let's call that traditional agriculture. And that's this one over here as well. So both of these I'm going to call traditional agriculture. And for the for the purposes of this video, the difference between traditional agriculture and modern agriculture, in traditional agriculture, you didn't have mechanization. So you didn't you had or very primitive mechanization. You definitely did not have a fossil fuel based engines. You didn't have modern pesticides. You did not have modern uh, genetically engineered crops. But you did have some of the basic science of breeding crops and irrigating and using animals as tools. So in this stage right over here, and once again, it completely depends on where you are on the planet, how fertile the land is, how good your tools are, what crops you're actually producing. Let's assume that we got a hundredfold increase in productivity. And looking at some of the historical records, it looks like, depending on, once again, where you are, that's not out of the realm of possibility. So you have a hundredfold increase. So instead of 2,000 calories per square kilometer per day, you can get 200,000. 200,000 calories per square kilometer per day. And now you could support 100 humans per square kilometer, if you wanted to. So you might not have 100 humans. One, not all the land might you might not be able to farm from. Or they, you just, that's, you, the, there are other limits on the population for, for, for whatever they might be. But the important thing to think about this upper bound, in this traditional, if you are able to get this type of productivity from your land, and you're able to, in theory, support 100 100 people per square kilometer, that means if all of a sudden you have 200 people living there, maybe everyone's migrated to this land because it seems especially fertile or all the really smart farmers live there, then all of a sudden not everyone's going to be able to get 2,000 calories a day. Some people might get malnourished. Other people might actually starve. There, there, there's this upper bound on the actual number of people that can be there based on how productive the land actually is. And now let's move over to modern agriculture. And we've already talked a little bit about what exactly is modern agriculture. You have, you have machines like this combine over here that does a lot of the human labor. One human can, can and, and, and I'll talk about the different dimensions, because there's actually two dimensions here. How much, how much calories can you get from the land? And how much energy can one human, how much labor can one human do uh, input into the land using tools at their disposal. So in this case, cattle, these ox pulling this plow, or in this case, this combine that's fueled by fossil fuels. But in modern agriculture, because of all of the things, you have these amazing tools, you have genetically engineered crops, you have modern pesticides, and not everyone is a fan of all of these things, but they have hugely increased our productivity. So you have modern agriculture. And let's say that you get another factor of 10 from traditional agriculture. So now you can get 2 million calories per square kilometer per day. Or you can support 1,000 you can support 1,000 humans, 1,000 humans per square kilometers. And once again, this right over here 
This right over here is an upper bound. And just to give a sense, and I picked these numbers just so that the numbers would be clean. I looked at some historical records. These aren't completely out of line with what it looks like humans have been able to do in the past. But to give you a sense of what human population densities look like right now and why this upper bound seems to be right about correct, in a place like the United States, so in the United States, the population density is 30 people per square kilometer. So this is 30 humans per square kilometer. In a more dense country, or significantly more dense country like India, the population density is 300 humans per square kilometer. And in the most population dense country in the world, which is where I come from, or actually I was born in New Orleans, but where, my, where some of my ancestors came from, which is Bangladesh. So there's a lot of people like me, I guess. Uh, in Bangladesh, you have a population density of 900 humans per square kilometer. And to some degree, this is a testament to the fertility of the land and, and whatever else. But this is pretty near the limits, depending on agricultural productivity and whatnot in the land, of modern techno technology. So it really makes you think if you don't get population under control, you might end up with some of these kind of hitting the wall type of scenarios. And so the last thing I want you to think about, and this is what I refer to a little bit more, is just think about those two dimensions because sometimes they get a little bit muddled. One is the kind of the productivity of land, productivity of land, and then the other is the productivity of labor, productivity of labor. So right over here in a hunter gatherer, they're not getting money calories from their land, so they're right over there. And the humans have to do all the labor. They're not ha they don't have animals helping them in any way. They definitely don't have robots or any type of engines helping them in any way. And so there's so they have to spend a lot of human time and a lot of human labor doing the work, getting that productivity from the land. But as we progress, so as we progress with things that aid humans, so for example, if you, all of a sudden you have cattle helping you or you have other tools that, that help you, you get more human productivity. So less and less of human labor has to be used to get that productivity of the land. And so maybe other humans can go do other things like paint pictures or become blacksmiths or whatever. And in this direction, you get higher productivity per unit of land. And so that comes from moving from hunter-gatherer to a pastoral lifestyle, to traditional farming with irrigation, to modern farming. And so in this, on this graph right over here, tech kind of tools for the individuals move us up. Getting more productivity of the land move us to the right. Modern agriculture gets us right over here. So we're getting, many, we're getting much, much more calories per unit land. And we're getting much, much more calories per unit labor. So you need much fewer, uh, a much smaller percentage of the human population actually involved in the farming. Anyway, I'll let you go there. Hopefully that gives you at least a, an understanding of, you know, the food isn't just, it doesn't just come from nowhere. And it really is a, a rate limiting factor on humanity's population.